I have known my brother Stanley for longer than I can remember. We grew up only a year and a half apart. We played hide and seek, kicked a can, learned to swim together in the irrigation ditch, built hard pan forts with wooden trays as our roof. We hunted together, played football, baseball, and basketball together. We did most things together. In high school, we were both part of the Dinuba High School wrestling team. Stanley was in the 133-pound class, and I was in the smaller 103-pound class. When I began to gain weight, Stanley watched my diet. An egg or small bowl of cereal in the morning? A small lunch and supper? In retrospect, I wonder how that diet impacted me physically and mentally. Well, I'll leave that judgment to you. Stanley was a coin collector. He would take $5 or sometimes even 10 to Bank of America and exchange it for rolls of pennies. We would go through them looking for pennies that were worth something. Something special like a 1909 SVDB. As far as I know, we never found anything special and valuable. Later on, Stanley became a collector of baseball, football, basketball, truck, and I think even wrestling cards. Stanley invested in train locomotives, small and big. He bought baseball shirts like Stan the Man Musual and many others. In the last decade of Stanley's life, he was focused on Billy the Kid. Stan couldn't let a good deal go by. Many today would say that he had an addiction and couldn't resist buying. Even when he knew he was dying, he bought another card of some type. He told me that to stop looking and buying was like rolling over and passively dying. No way was that going to be a part of his life. My brother Stanley was in his own words a hoarder. Stanley was a conscientious objector during the Vietnam War and worked at Rancho Las Omegas Hospital in Los Angeles. Later, Stanley worked at Lou and Wally's 7-Eleven store in Seattle, Washington, owned a pet store in Dinuba and raised many tropical fish. He worked at a truck stop for many years and made friends from all over North America. After Stan's divorce, he renewed his faith and was baptized on confession of his faith in his mid-twenties. When Stanley was diagnosed with AML, he had recently bought an iPhone, and we FaceTime each other four, five, yes, even six times per week. The iPhone proved so very valuable in that I was able to visit with Stanley more in one year than the 10 previous years combined. Stanley, you were a dear brother to all siblings and was deeply loved by Donna and her family. You loved your nephews and nieces and treated them as special. Your friendship and love will be remembered. We all love you. Adios amigo, which means goodbye my friend. I love you.